all again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I feel like we're being redundant because I feel like all I talk about lately is things that are on the ballot, but well, it is there's kind an of an election important. coming up. Remember, remember the 5th of September. No, no. <laughs> October, November. <laughs> uh, Next <what>? month. <laughs> Three weeks from today. That's crazy. That's crazy. How does that happen? Um... I was looking this morning, because this is what I do on Tuesday mornings, I look on things in line. I was looking up, um, my original plan was I wanted to talk a bit about the School Charter Commission, which we can come back to, and I had gone out to the city clerk's website, which has got all sorts of handy information on it, and um, to find wh- how many people we were electing to the School Charter Commission. Is it? A, it's a lot, it's, right? Well, we're electing nine, nine so we'll come back. there are like 30-something people What I running, did realize right? is we have two different ballots. Oh, and I was very, because I was like, wait a minute. I'm going to look at that. So the sample, ba- if you go out to the city clerk's website, you can download um, your ward sample ballot. How did they figure out where the names go? Why am I like the last, second It's alphabetical. Last? We can come back to that. No, it's not. Oh, it's weird. No, it's not. Mm-hmm. H-I-J-K-L, all the way this way, starting with H, but why is Hamer? And why is, L- uh, like, Because he's a D. I don't know. Okay, we're anyways. getting distracted. Anyways, so I went out there and I realized... When you go to vote at three weeks from today on November 5th. <laughs> well, um, I'm not going to try that again. <laughs> you'll get two ballots. One has the normal municipal stuff. That's where you'll vote for Victoria Sullivan for mayor. And you'll vote for your alderman. And you'll vote for school committee members. And you'll vote for the ward level positions. That's on the front side. On the back side of that, there are three um, questions that you answered, which we talked about last week. Um, the city clerk does have a little voter guide kind of explaining what the questions are, which ones are binding, which was, which ones aren't so good okay. for them. Um, did, did we ascertain? Cause we talked about which ones were non-binding and binding. They are the only one that's not binding is the one that says it's non-binding. Okay. The one about the kids on the school board, school committee. Um, the second one about the sports book, retail locations is binding okay um and i did read a little bit more about that it does talk um the, there was a law passed this year that allows 10 because we you know created a monopoly again um allows 10 of these sports book establishments across the state of new hampshire so it's basically sports gambling it is it's lo- vote it's a, an establishment where you would be able to go and vote or not vote um bet on a football game or things like, you know, on you know, sports. I, I watched this documentary. I forget what it was, on, uh, which channel it was on, but it was really fascinating. It was about sports betting yep. and the fact that these markets are being liberated. Yep. And it was set mostly in Vegas. Yeah. But I had no idea how nuanced this betting right. is now. Like, you can literally bet on what you think if someone's like throwing the football to someone else whether you think that guy is going to catch catch it it or not it's insane who knew right um so reading a little bit about the the law um there's 10 there can be 10 locations or licenses or whatever we want to call it across new hampshire um nashua is interested um the, st- the state lottery commission or the gaming Concord commission or whatever did. It is, i think laconia has um, one in north Country. says there is distinct interest in manchester so apparently there are entities interested in manchester part of the law which you and i might not like this part said before they can do this even though we made these sports bet the sports book whatever the heck they're called sports book locations legal you still have to get permission from the local municipality which in some ways i like but it is kind of funny we're doing that backwards permission thing Mm. instead of manchester saying we don't allow it we have to get permission to allow it which you shouldn't have to get permission to do things from your government that aren't illegal but isn't that like a home rule not a kind of issue so So the question will be on the ballot um if we say yes we will allow these then a business could apply to the state for one of those 10 permission slips so those are the questions are they only going to give like one per city or could all i don't know i don't know i didn't what are the rules for the special monopoly (laughs) gambling that we've set up i didn't i didn't look that far okay um so who knows? But that's on there. So th- it was just interesting that the city clerk's office does have a voter guide to kind of help people with that. Because if you think about it, right, when they introduced Kino, I mean, I know there are well, several establishments in Manchester, yeah. including Frickers, which yeah. is just down the road from me. Um, and I thought it was really interesting as if you notice that I'm not saying, you know, but there were a lot of winners 
So this is managed by the the Lottery well, Commission, yeah. right? So right when Kino was oh, introduced, yeah, they probably got all sorts of there winners. were a lot of winners in so those now first like play four more. months. Now you play and, all the and now I don't yeah. really see, uh, see yeah. the winners anymore. Maybe it's just a it's a coincidence, I'm sure. Um, then on the second ballot, when you go three weeks from today, on November fifth to vote, um, will be something that looks has lists and lists of names. This is. Um, for school charter commission, vote for no more than nine. So we are electing nine, and there are two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, thirty-two, thirty-four. Th there's thirty-seven names to choose from. And the and second to last one is Carla yes, Garrick. So way over here on the me. bottom, you want to vote for Carla Garrick, and right <laughs> above her, you can vote for James R. Gaudet. He's a pretty good guy. He he works with the taxpayers group. Um, what is you were asking what order? Um, in state law, mm. there is a provision because everybody always asks, how does so-and-so end up at the top of the belt? You know, right. Because they it starts up, with Hopwood. Right. So I, what I don't understand here is, um, I heard that they do it by sort of lottery. There's a lottery. Something. The secretary of state does it for an entire cycle and they pull a letter and then you it's vote. alphabetically from there. So apparently this is alphabetically from H, except for I don't know why Gary Hamer's down at the end, because I would think that you uh, would be the end. Oh, maybe a, they pulled Hopwood. Maybe they literally pulled no, your not, name. No, it's not. I don't believe it's by um, that candidate. It is literally set. All ballots across the entire state are determined like two years ago hmm. by the Secretary of State in, in there. So they're, I don't know. But that's, if you look, they are alphabetical. They go from H all the way through the alphabet and around back to H. <laughs> um, but it is interesting because the School Charter Commission, which Carla is running for, so sh you should all fill in the dot for Carla Garrick. Um, I'm not really sure what the School Charter Commission is going to do. I'm, I, I think of myself as a fairly informed person when it comes to um, both RSAs about what the city can do because of the spending cap and what laws we had to change for that and also about what's going on with municipal elections kind of except for this i feel like i'm totally confused because you know because I, I got a thing from manchester ink link and they were like please complete this voter's guide right for the and as always filling it out i was kind of like hmm i don't know what i'm not really sure what this is going to do other than it seems like we are trying to create a separate separate chart well that's what i don't understand authority, well that's what i believe that's if i had to bet a beer on what I think the underlying agenda is. I think it is so that the schools... Can we bet something I can drink? Okay. <laughs> well, how about we'll bet, um, we'll bet some, I don't know. Some Lemonade. <laughs> a really, really good coffee from Republic, mm. okay? If I could bet a really, really good coffee from Republic on the underlying agenda, I would say it's to get out from underneath um, the, tax the, cap. the tax cap, the control of uh, the budget by the aldermen, um, perhaps the ethics things that lie in the current charter. Oh, uh, so the conflict of interest. Right. We do know that is a challenge here in Manchester yes. is a lot of the aldermen who serve uh, actually vote on contracts yes. where either they have family members or direct, yes. uh, you know, people in their households who are well, and now I, I, uh, beneficiaries of the largesse. Well, that and goes if we take giving, out some uh, of more and more of our taxpayer if we money, take to them. that 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 ethics part out, right? <laughs> of the school side of things, does that mean we can elect, you know, spouses of teachers and then, you know, not have any, any guidelines? I really don't, I honestly, sincerely have no idea because I Which printed- Which is why it would be good to get, you know, a, a good, good mix of you people can't just on pick, that commission. Right, you you, can, just pick you people, can't just pick a bunch of education people because that's spending probably people. not going to work I mean, out well. You know, maybe, you know, John Clayton's a, rep uh, a Democrat, but you know, okay, I like him. I've worked right, with I'm John thinking, on issues. I mean, Tim Baines is on this list. Tim's I would vote for Tim guy. Baines. I, I think too. he's objective. I think he would look at this, um, objectively you know i think he because really what you want to do right you want to have a balance of people when i was completing that thing for manchester inkling um you know i said well i think my strengths are of course i'm a former lawyer yeah, so, so that i helps. get to um say if we're going to be writing documents that are like legalese I, I can certainly bring my expertise to that but then you know i can also balance it from the perspective of i'm a taxpayer right. and i believe that more choice yep is right genuinely makes well, people happier right so you know if you want to be happy well, get a good mix better results but um 
I, I keep going back to, okay, so I printed out the city charter. Because you can go on this Manchester um, City Clerk's website and you can see the city charter. And this is basically just the rules. This is like the constitution of Manchester on how we do things. Who's responsible? I should probably read that. Well, that's what I figured. Yeah. It, 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 I think I've read parts over the years. It printed out but... on 25 pages. Okay. No. So it's not like some ridiculously long, bloated document. Um, you know, it talks about It'll the board. probably be 24. It, it probably could be 22. <laughs> um, it talks about the powers and duties of the board of mayor and aldermen. It talks about, you know, the powers and duties and veto power and appointments and stuff for, by the mayor. Talks about departments and department heads and appointed officers, you know, like all the things. And then it gets down to schools and school committee. So I'm like, oh, okay. And it says under there, if you flip to that section, there's only, it's only not even one page. Oh, wow. And it talks about, um, where did it go? School committee. See, now I lost my school committee. It is like down here. It's less than one page. The Manchester shall continue to constitute a single school district and accept as otherwise provided in this charter. The board of mayor and aldermen and the school committee shall and the school committee shall to continue to exercise such power in relation thereto as these respective bodies have under the law in effect at the time of the adoption of this charter. I swear I will write it in more well, clear right, English. Right, that's folks. really bad. <laughs> um, the school committee shall be comprised of 14 members, one of each from 12 wards of the city, two at large. The school committee shall sit and act together as one body. The mayor shall be an ex officio member with all the powers and privileges of other committee members and shall be chairman of the committee. So the school committee different to school board? Or no, is we call a, it school it's board. A it's a school it's committee. The same thing. The school okay. committee shall nominate a candidate for superintendent of schools for election in accordance with state law. Hmm. Candidate for superintendent of schools for election. That's weird because we don't elect the superintendent. No, we have and no should a vacancy occur in the office of school committeemen, the board of aldermen shall fill vacancy until such election is held. That's all there is in, in the whole charter about the schools. Okay. Um, but then, you but know, then there's a law. Then we pa then the state passed a law this year that was put in by Pat Long, um, saying we're going to establish the Manchester shall establish um, a school si a charter commission to revise, amend, or replace the Manchester school district charter. Um, this, which I don't think we so actually that's have. That's not the Manchester no, this is, this, School I don't District think Charter. So, right? so we should see if we can get our hands. I on don't that. think there. But here's the thing. You know, I I read an interesting article this morning by Rich Girard, yeah. who of course is not running again. Right. But he did serve on the yeah. school board for yeah. a long time. And he used to be. Um, he worked in the mayor's office for Ray was work. Right, and so you know, he talked about. Um, the, is it Manchester Proud, which is yeah. a sort of nonprofit group that right. is very interested in the education? I mean, I'd be curious, and in fact, how many I will, of these people have donated? I'm going to go research how many of these people are uh, either part involved of, or yeah, have donated to. Right. Well, you, well, you see, you can't know who. Oh, donated that's right, because it's a it's a nonprofit. So those well, so the interesting thing is with New Hampshire's 91A, yeah. I believe. Um, uh, there's case law that actually says if you are a quasi-governmental agency, right. i.e. if you're getting more than 50% of your money from the government, from the government then you are actually subject oh, to 91A, um, you know, laws and, you know, to open transparent yeah. government. So I think that that certainly is interesting. an interesting tool that we maybe should start Of course, start how do you explore. know if they get more than 50%? Yeah, no, there's, a, they they get. There, there's a chicken and egg. But I think that okay. with anything where, um, you know, certainly I see... I, I think it's Kathy Sullivan, the, yeah, the, she's former, the chair, former chair right? of the Democratic Party. She, she loves to look up, um, you know, who's spending what and who's filed what and yeah. how many donations everyone's got. And she's a big, big proponent of transparency when it comes to the flow of money. So maybe Kathy could stand with us and, and say, hey, and where, be like, where? hey, like, where, where, who's funding what and where is this money coming from right. and what are the special interests? So. You're going to be asked to elect these nine people that I'm not exactly sure what actual, what they're going to what do. they're going to do. Cause it says the charter commission, this is in the law. The charter commission shall submit its recommendations for a procedure to revise, amend or replace the Manchester school district charter in the form of a valid question to the, I'm not, I'm still not convinced that there's a school charter. So I, we, we're giving these nine people this direction that they can put a ballot question on next year's election, which conveniently happens to be a presidential year, which if there's an underlying um, goal of, well, well, the Democrats have the advantage, that could just 
backfire. Completely. Well, I want to go back to why I mentioned uh, Rich Gerard's uh, yes. blog post was because in that, you know, he talked about, and he's, you know, he's he's leaving, so yeah. I think he's just trying to like data dump, yeah. right? He's like, here's what I learned over yeah. time. Here's right? things so, I've been noticing. So I'm just really taking it as an information source. I really don't have any opinion. I'm just learning, right? And uh, and so he thinks that you know we had this push earlier in the year for for uh, a tax override right yes. they, the aldermen yes. did talk about hey should we put something on the ballot that can override the tax cap and there was a big stink there was a bit of a response from you know the taxpayers of manchester and uh so they decided to take it off but apparently the backstory to that is they took it off because they didn't want to bring out the, and i quote the wrong the wrong kind of voters yep. which would be people who who uh, care about the tax cap because they care about right. us living and exercising our rights within our means, right? right. So, you know, that I think this is a full run around around the tax cap. And if you think this is not an issue that you should be concerned about, think again. You know, we spend 60% of the money that's spent in the city. I mean, it's more than 50% of the money goes just to the schools. I mean, what are we spending on each student? Over $16,000, I believe right. now. So the it's question crazy. becomes, like, how much, but, you know, we're not getting, uh, as compared to 10 years ago, whatever, yeah. it's probably doubled since then. Uh, I don't even know, but I'll go look it up. There, and we're just not seeing results. We're not, well, and interesting, so I, I don't think, I think I read this since we talked last. Um, last high school, I was reading an article about they're trying this different type of education, and I'm all for there being a very yeah. amount of um, educational options for kids because not all kids learn the same and not all kids can excel the same, which is why I'm such a big proponent of school choice because kids aren't round pegs that fit into the square hole or however that works. That's just not how kids work. So West High School is doing some alternative type of thing where there's kids are more responsible for their their schedules and classes are twice as long and every other day and I didn't really get into the nitty-gritty of it. I just thought it was interesting that this is an interesting alternative because there probably are kids that would benefit from this. But the problem is the kids that go to West High are still dictated by where they live, not by that that, that is the best choice. That, and the so, best choice meaning that that your child might learn a certain way. You know, like when I was in high school back in Africa, <laughs> you know, like we didn't know things like some people are visual learners yes. and some people are Everybody audible. did the same like, thing. You know, we all did the same thing. And now we've learned over time that people yep. learn differently. So why wouldn't we lean into right. the idea that we should create it, schools right. and create competition so that we can do the best right. for well, our children? Right, well, and that's children. what I thought. I thought that's great that West High School is going to have this alternative and West High has the... And like a Gosler down but where I yeah. am, they did this great program based on Stephen Covey's, you know, Seven Steps for Successful People or whatever the yeah. old book is from yeah. the 90s, which was like a seminal work yeah. at the time. I remember reading it and being like, all right, you do these seven <laughs> things, you're going to succeed in life. And I implemented them as part of sort of yeah. my life, right? And I was like, oh, that's really cool. It's kind of like leadership yep. stuff. And I spoke to someone who is on a school board in Nashua, and she was like, yeah, Carla, it's great. Except if they can't read and write, it doesn't help that they're learning all this touchy-feely right. stuff. And I was like, oh, yeah, but, you well, have and, a point. And back to the, the, the assignment to school by your address. So let's say this new idea at West High School is great. I don't know that it is. It might be awful. <laughs> And it might be better for kids who are self self motivated right. and are better can you know better do that. But what about the kid who happens to live on Varney Street, who needs a much more structured, much more traditional um, environment to learn in? Tammy's going to send him to military school. No, I'm not <laughs> saying that, but I'm just saying, but he that kid doesn't get a choice whether he wants to right. go to the program at West High School yep. or over to Memorial, which might be more structured. Right. I don't I get think it. I should. think it's awful that school, especially middle school and high school, I think, are limited by your address. I mean, so let's say this charter commission <laughs> is something where we can, uh, I hate to use the word radical because a lot of times that'll scare people, right. but let's just say let's let's change the status quo a little. Right. Like maybe if there is this opportunity to get the right people in the room, and I believe I'm yeah. one of those right people, um, 
maybe, you know, maybe we could just really shake things well, up. I mean, I would still say whatever it is needs to be subject to the tax cap. Yes. Like, we can't go nuts. Like, we right. can't do You can't just say, oh, we and we're going to send you a new tax bill, and we're not going to follow the tax cap, and we're going to take out all the ethics and stuff. Right. Um, and what interesting, I don't have kids, so, you know, I don't deal with this day in, day out like some parents do. Um, I never really thought about it, but it makes a, t a lot of sense to me anyways. One of the things that Victoria Sullivan talks about is the need for a district-wide curriculum. And I thought, well, well I don't know. Well, why? Right? Because I, why? And then the, wherever I was reading it, maybe it was something that Victoria wrote, because if, um, you know, this family lives over here on, you know, Clinton Street, and their kids go to Parker Varney, and they're learning the curriculum there in second grade, and halfway through the year, they move from Clinton Street to the other side of the river, and now they're going to Jewett Street School. If they're using a completely different curriculum, that kid's like, no, yeah, not, I'm like a Justin Die, and I'm not, you know. No, I think <laughs> I'm no, I, sorry, I, but I mean, I, I don't know. I was in six primary school, no, no, so I'm, I'm like, just saying. I, I, I think I, th I think teaching techniques versus curriculum. Like I think I lump them together. Like, I think there should be, this is what you're supposed to, we're, we're teaching in second grade. This is the general, but like. isn't that what these standardized tests are, no, no, right? Because now they're just teaching I, kids how, how to, to take pass the, the test. test. I don't, I never had to take that many really... tests when I was a kid. I remember taking some, some tests. I don't think it had anything to do with, like, my scores. I think it was more of a, like, we, we, and they were standardized tests, but I mean, there was, like, I rarely remember them in grade school, maybe like fourth grade or sixth grade. I remember taking one series of them in junior, in seventh grade. Are there in, in, in New Hampshire or maybe even in America, and excuse my ignorance, so no. maybe people will be like, no, we definitely have not her there. But I'm someone who's willing to say I don't know something yeah. and go find it out or yeah. ask the right people, which I think is how life should right. work, right? You can't know everything. But are there like remedial schools here? Like, are there like... Like, I know like there are special kids, ed um, classes and that kind I of think stuff, so. but do we have I don't any? know. I know no. there's summer school, okay. but I don't, okay. uh, but that's usually like specific course, because like you reason, failed math, so you have to go to summer school. Well, the reason I ask, right, is one of the criticism I have heard against school choice is people say, well, but you're not forced to take um, oh. underperforming students, right, and scholars. And I'm like, okay. But they well, do. But, but, you know, and they do. Yeah. Right. You know, because people learn differently. Right. And, um. And I've always thought, well, that's interesting because is that like really a concern? Uh, you know, I mean, I know special ed costs us a right. fortune, right. right? It's it's um, over two hundred. Right. I don't know that we actually. Child. I don't know that we actually spend more money on low performing kids, or have any plan for those low performing kids other than I mean, because well, we no, because we push them on to the next grade and then they perform low there. I mean, it's, it's, and this is the reason why I'm so passionate. You know, when I still lived in New York, I taught at City College, right? Mm -hmm. And I was teaching uh, freshman composition. And the kids can't, they can't who write. were in college couldn't, like, read and write properly. Like, they were writing at, I, I would say, like a 10-year-old level. And I'm like, look, if you're going into student debt yeah. to... Like go to school to get a degree in something that probably isn't going to be, you know, it's like, what are we I remember doing? you say that I, um, I had a friend, uh, a mutual friend, uh, not your friend, I'm just saying a friend of, in our lives who was a, um, who is a teacher now. And she could not write well at all. I mean, at all. And I, I remember thinking, you have a college degree first. And you're going to teach kids, and literally, you struggle to write in the English right. language using, I mean, you know, I think I've proper said this grammar. on this show before, but like I, I really struggled when I taught because I, um, I was kind of like I'm gonna fail them all because yeah. <laughs> they're not up to snuff. And I went to see my advisor, and he was like, "You can't do that." And I was like, "I don't but know how to grade this." And he said, "Take the one that's the least bad." 
Make that an A and then grade That's on the curve. That's not really how. And I was like, how are we helping anyone with this? We're not. Right? We're just so now money. you're just you're collecting money, but you're also pushing people out into the world that aren't fully equipped no. to do what they're supposed to do. So if we're spending all this money on kids, I don't think it's unreasonable to say they have to be able to read and write read when and they write. get out of school. I mean, basic right, basic reading. You don't have to be like you don't have to be able to read Shakespeare and. I mean, it'd be nice, don't get me wrong. <laughs> no, but I'm saying, I. but you should be able to read this ch city charter yeah. and comprehend at least... Well, not that first sentence no. you read. <laughs> or at least read a sentence and know, that doesn't work, right? Those right. words aren't, that's not the yeah. right words. Um, <laughs> What's this word salad that they're trying right. to... <laughs> what is it, why is there an extra two in there? Because this doesn't make any sense. So you should be able to do that and you should be able to balance your checkbook and do basic math. I don't, you don't have to be, you know, no, you don't have to not, be a calculus I'm, major or anything, but... If you can't balance a checkbook, not that anybody has a checkbook, but if you can't balance your bank account or you can't, to be honest. So, so I swear, I read this the other day and I don't think it was a joke. I think it was in all seriousness. Apparently there are people who uh, didn't realize that your When the checks are gone, that means the money's, money's gone. gone. Yes. yes. I can't wrap my head around that. <laughs> and they say that, I've heard that for years, but they, they I, I read the same article that you read. They were talking about um kids just not understanding so they they get overdrawn at the bank because they were like but i didn't know because i still had checks in my checkbook so i assumed i still had money in my checking account right and i really am a big proponent i think in high school and i think it should start much earlier than high school you know oh but you reading and writing we should be people economics and teach the how the, how Sorry. how uh, the economy works the j basic economy and basic life skills i mean when we were when i was in you know, 800 years ago when I was in junior high and we took home ec, which only the girls could take, uh, you know, we learned how to sew and we learned how to cook and things like that. But now, and then they changed that and they made it more like life skills. But apparently they're not teaching life skills. You know, I mean, yes, I do think that, I think all kids should learn basic cooking skills. Oh, yeah. I think all kids should learn. I mean, learn I got kicked out of my, my cooking class. I was in an all girls high school, but we had, yeah, was a we had home ec. And, you know, I was two years younger than my grade, so I think sometimes I'd just be, and I forget, I, we were making Welsh rabbit. And I, like, I just don't know. You were like, but I burned something, and they yeah. were like, hmm, Carla, but we I mean, think you got to sit outside all kids for a learn <laughs> basic banking procedure? Basic banking. Well, shouldn't you be you know, learning things at school that are basic contract. helpful Basic contract life? and understanding that a contract is binding. Because I don't think people know that when they rent an apartment and say, I'm going to give you $1,000 a month rent, that that means you well, contract you see, but it. here's the thing, Tammy, is is uh, we, we kind of live in this world where people are have very separated ideas about yep. what is enforceable, yeah. right? So if you're saying the Constitution is a living document, mm -mm. then, you know, then you're like, ah, oh, contracts aren't binding. Right. It's a problem. It's right. a slippery slope. Wow. So we've succeeded at another... Facebook Live, Yay. I think, anyways, um, or not. Maybe that's just us looking at me on the camera. Um, thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions or concerns, manchtalk at gmail.com. Follow us on our Facebook page, Manch Talk. Um, we have a Twitter feed, but Twitter's evil. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm not I, doing Twitter I anymore. I put the twit in Twitter. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I'm not good at it. But thank you for tuning in on Facebook if you did. And uh, we will see you next week. Make sure you go to the farmer's market. Enjoy the beautiful, beautiful foliage. Oh, the foliage is stunning this year. That's all we got. Peace out, guys. Bye.